Yeah? You're gonna come help me? Come on, let's do these breaks together. Hello, welcome internet people. Today I'm gonna be working on my sister's 2001 Nissan Xterra 4x4. There's a link up above, they'll get you caught up. Right now I'm squatting in the corner next to a little space heater because it was cold. My leg is at the point where I think it's just about to catch on fire, so I'm gonna call that good. Anyway, today I'm gonna be doing some stuff on the Xterra that is an absolute must to take this thing off-road because they have a fatal design flaw on the 4x4 models. The way the hubs were designed on these it allows you to use four-wheel drive as long as you're driving forwards. But if you get stuck and you need to go in reverse, like what happens a lot of the times when you're off-road, it will pop it out of four-wheel drive because of the way these automatic lock-in hubs are designed. It requires torque applied to the hub to then lock it. So if you're stuck and you go put it in reverse, you're kind of boned. I think it will actually lock in reverse, but you have to move the vehicle physically for a little bit for it to then lock it in. Good, good, good. good. Damn, I forgot. I gotta replace that stud and I didn't get one. Oh well. Heavy, 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 heavy me and the boys. So what I purchased is a set of these guys right here. These are not sponsored, just did a little bit of research and I read that these mile marker hubs are actually really good for the price. They're like half the price of the Warren brand ones and I did hear a lot of good things about them. So decided to give them a shot. You guys know how I do things. I'm not just gonna put new hubs on here and call it a day. I'm gonna put some brand new brakes on here as well. And suspension wise, I'm still waiting on one more part so I can address this issue and get this lift done completely the right way. Well that sucks. The caliper guide pin bolt just sheared right off. Luckily they have them in stock at the auto parts store. Arter, arter parts. Arter parts store. They're gonna deliver them here in a second. Why can I not talk today? Jeez, what is wrong with me? The guys next door have a parts washer and I was really tempted to just take these off and stick on the parts washer, but I'm not trying to restore this truck and I have to stop because then I'm gonna have to rebuild the calipers, put new seals on there. Oh jeez. Oh my God. <laughs> How the f this is insane. I'm using a cheater bar oh, and I still can't get it. Let's see if this helps. Hell yeah. It's off. Ew. This is the worst smell in the world. I hate used grease. Come on. Nope. Stupid. Don't go flying. Don't go flying. Don't go flying. There we go. Take that guy off. If you've never seen one of these before, seriously the best invention ever. If you have screws that you really don't want to strip that are in there tight, you just impact it with a hammer and then it turns the tip of the screwdriver. Super smart. Bearing. Well, that was easy enough. I'm not gonna put it back together today though because I'm gonna go get a Manny Petty because my nails are looking ratchet. So we'll continue this manana. Hello, it's following day. I just got a side note for you guys. If you notice there's a little bit of gray noise in the first half of this video, I dropped my Rode microphone and it broke. It's making weird gray static. So I ordered a new one, but for the rest of the video, I don't have an external mic. So the audio might be, mm, sorry. Now 
now that I got everything all cleaned up, I don't know what I'm doing because there's no way I'm going to get this on my hand while holding a camera in the other hand. It's time to reassemble. I don't like doing this. This is sketchy. Alright, see if I can do this evenly. Denskis. When you push the grease through the top, it starts looking like little pomegranate seeds. Is it a seed or a berry, the inside of a pomegranate? I don't know. I think they're, I think they're seeds. They look like berries. I still have two more bearings and two more races to do on that other hub. So I'm gonna snap my fingers and it's done. It's done. Not really. It, it will be when I edit this. Fresh new rotors, coated also. Rotor goes on like that. Even though cars pretty much never rust here in Arizona, which I know you're probably wondering why this has rust on it, and that's because this truck probably spent some time outside of Arizona before my sister bought it. But uh, I, either way, I still bought the coated rotors just because I think it looks like trash when they start getting all dingy. Okay. You. On. There you go. That guy goes in there. That feels good right there. Torque to tap. Ooh, look at that money. Right on the money. I can't believe I actually lined that up absolutely perfectly. First try. <sighs> These are three and a half millimeter Allen heads. I've never had to use three and a half millimeter on anything until today. Look at that. That's so much simpler than the auto lock-in hubs. I mean, auto lock-in hubs are nice, but this is, this is simple, real simple. Ooh, before I forget, I gotta put the snap ring back on there. My only complaint is these things did come with these little paper gaskets that to go on the back side to keep water and dirt and stuff from getting inside the wheel bearing area. But as you can see, it doesn't fit very well. Uh, the OE one uses an O-ring, and that also won't fit. So I'm just going to use some silicone RTV to make sure that's a good tight seal so nothing gets in there. We'll adapt, we'll do. Put a tiny little bit of extra grease right inside these teeth. skis and check this out I was magic I did that side already too magic it gets a little redundant when I film the same thing twice when I have to do two of them the guy's got a little terminator in the shop today hmm stock blower what are you doing Cleaning up. there's people that want to know where Jeff is at he's at home keep another puppy company he's fine okay. he's thriving actually so there is your update on Jeff the small dog. He's alive and thriving. Don't you dare make me feel guilty for not painting these brake calipers, all right? This is not a restoration. This, this finish right here is very desirable. It's called off-road shit patina. And that's why it's a, it's a combination of new finishes and old finishes. Off-road shit patina. How much you want to make a bet when I go to finish the suspension lift in the front that I take these back off and paint them? I bet you I probably will. Here, Jeff. What are you doing, buddy? Jeff, did you just fart? I think you farted, didn't you? Yeah, you just farted. It stinks really bad. Did you? Did you fart? Oh, are you shy because you farted? <laughs> Hello, it's the following day, and there you go, there's a little Jeff. I made this drag out into two separate days because I was so stressed out last night about not paying the calipers that I literally stopped because I wanted to go buy caliper paint. So I actually just bought a can of it and then changed my mind again. I'm sticking to my original judgment and not painting the calipers. It's gonna have steel wheels. You're not gonna see the calipers whatsoever. And it's just gonna make me wanna keep doing stuff everywhere else 
and spending more and more time on this thing when I shouldn't because I have my own projects that I need to start working on. So I, I gotta call it quits and not keep putting too much effort into this. Celine, do you care? Do you, do you like the off-road shit patina? Yep, that's character. I swear having this brake caliper kit is the best thing ever. Instead of having to use a giant C-clamp and struggling to compress these pots into this caliper. Look at that. Money. So nice. So, so nice. And this thing's magnetic too. Look at that. I wonder how much of a mess I'm making right now on the firewall considering I didn't drain any of the brake fluid out of the reservoir before I started compressing these pots. Let's just hope that maybe it was a little bit low. I'll get lucky. Jeff, are you gonna help? Yeah? You gonna come help me? Come on, let's do these brakes together. The caliper hardware was trash on this thing, so I'm replacing it. The boots were good though. Boots will stay. May not be pretty, but at least it's clean. Put a little bit of brake clean on there, or as I like to call it, turd patina polish. Make sure these calipers are as clean as I can possibly get them. They didn't even get any cleaner than that in the parts washer. They just have a permanent brown tinge to them. I just gotta go through and torque all the hardware now. If I don't film something, it doesn't mean I didn't do it. It's just, I'm trying to work and film at the same time, so it's a little bit of a balance. I try my best to film every little last thing that I do, but sometimes I just, I just want to work. I don't want to have to move the camera around 500,000 times and position it and explain what I'm doing. Sometimes I just want to do it. I think you guys can appreciate that. Let's get this thing outside. So I gotta go get my sister and show her how these work, but real quick. So when they're in the free position, this is for two wheel drive. That means the front hubs are not locked in. It's kind of self-explanatory really. And then if you were to turn it, two rotations, I think. I just see one, let's see. Yeah, it's one rotation. Now it says lock. Now when you go to put it in four wheel drive, it will be locked in four wheel drive all the time. So even if you go front, to back, it's gonna stay locked into four wheel drive. It'll never come out of four wheel drive until you go and unlock these manually. I haven't mentioned this in a video yet about what the other side of the shop is. And that's cause I was waiting for those guys to get everything set up. But we're actually gonna be doing an open house next Saturday. I just pooped. <laughs> You want to tell them about the open house and the car show? Show up, bring your cool ass car. Oh yeah, there's a food truck, there's hot dogs. Yeah. What day is it? <laughs> the 23rd. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's important, it's on the 23rd. I forgot what day it was, it was like, it's Saturday. Yeah, it's on the 23rd at 9 a.m. Uh, just don't be a dumbass. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So there you go. Lock, lock. All right. Hubs are locked in. Now shift into four wheel drive. Put it in neutral. The other shifter, put it in four high. There you go. There you go. Do you have a light on the dash? Yep. Oh yeah, it's in four wheel drive. It feels crazy, right? When it's in four high? Yeah, it's like stuck. I realize this isn't the most scientific test, but we're in a parking lot in a pinch, so I'm just making sure they're locking in. Put it in two wheel drive again. Okay. Now drive forward and see if the light goes off.
Good? Is the light off? TV off? Good. We're gonna do a full video off-roading with this thing soon. I'm just waiting on a couple more parts of the front end, finish the lift, and the new tires, and then we'll really put those hubs to the test. But real quick, we gotta go bed in these brake pads. And brake. Ooh. <laughs> okay. Going like 35. And brake. Woo! <laughs> Brakes are good on this thing now. Ready? Go! <laughs> it's like a little goat. Last one, ready? 55. Brake. Oh, Jesus! <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> My water softener's regenerating. This, this thing's just over there, peeing, doing whatever it does. It stopped. Anyway, I'll have some more Xterra stuff coming, a couple more videos before I get going on my own projects. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys soon with another video. Bye.